Russia says the wrath of God is coming to America. I want to give all the honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rabbachal Kodash. Double honors to my elders at Great Millstone, talking this truth through the Spirit. Single honors to the elect. Peace and blessed be to all the saints of men, women, and children that do consist of the one third. Shalom, shalom. The reason why I'm making this video is because World War III is inevitable in today's society. And America is the mystery whore Babylon spoken of in the Bible. When you read Revelation, the 17th chapter, when it speaks about the seven horns and the ten heads. All right, that's referring to EU and NATO. And also the beast will be the system that's being run by the so-called white man who politically correct will be called Caucasians, who biblically will be called Edomites or descendants of Esau. Now, whether you're Russian or Ukrainian or an American, you still descended from Esau because that's who you are descended from biblically. Now, when it's talking about the wrath of God, you gotta understand the Bible is a book of prophecy. So it speaks about events that are going to happen. Prophecy, pro means before, fase means to speak. So these events that are occurring, that are occurring today, forgive me, have been spoken of prior, meaning not only centuries, thousands of years ago, right? So people want answers and the men on the corner have been speaking and preaching Going back 30 years, I with the Apostle Tahar, Gabar, Ramla, Raka, and their elders about the end of the world, quote unquote, as we know it. You know, what should be the end of this society that, you know, the end, the end of this modern society. And it reminds me of that movie. I'm going to get to the um, lesson, though. But it reminds me of that movie, what is it, um, The Day After Tomorrow, where those elitists was were saying those guys on the corners with those signs were right let that sink in it's in the movie but let that sink in so without further ado why is the wrath of god coming to america well it tells you in the book of daniel that the lord ruleth in the kingdom of men and all the king's hearts are in the hand of the lord your heart is your mind the Lord control all these wars. The Lord control all these nations. The Lord control the out, ins and outs of, of life itself. If the Lord can give you life and take it, what make you think the Lord cannot dictate what happens in between your life and death duration? Right? And that's the same thing with every kingdom on earth. Every kingdom that has been on earth was because the Lord has sanctioned it. How can you tell that? The Lord said he hardened Pharaoh's heart. So he can show his power. So Pharaoh wouldn't let us go during the end of times of antiquity because of the Lord's power. The Lord hardened on Pharaoh's heart. Romans the 13th chapter said the powers to be have been ordained by God. So when you see Russia bickering with um, United States and the EU, that's an in-house fight. And what the scripture says, if... Satan cast out Satan and the kingdom shall not stand. Wow. So, Koholoyan lay how about Shema Shai because this is the end of America coming soon. This is the end of this wicked rulership coming soon. This is the end of the Renaissance era, the rebirth coming soon. Because us. So-called Negro Latinos and Native Americans being here in America and hardcore bondage as a part of biblical prophecy. And just like Russia saying the wrath of God is going to hit the United States, it's also biblical prophecy. Because the Lord said in the book of Job, the 12th chapter, the deceived and the deceiver are his. <laughs> I, I can't make it up. The spirit is heavy right now. In the book of Obadiah, what does it say about um, Esau? Pride has deceived thee, and America is so big on pride, especially on how America was sanctioned and founded off of rape, rob, murder, slavery, right? Degradation, all of that. So without further ado, Psalms 59 and 13, consume them in wrath, consume them that they may not be, and let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. Salah. 
Exactly. Because we've been scattered to the four winds of the earth. The Atlanta trade slave. Look, just type in the the Atlantic slave trade. Go to image. No, I'm sorry. Type in the Atlantic slave trade map. Go to images on Google, and you will see arrows pointing all directions from the west coast of Africa. Oh, side note: the first slaves came from Portugal and Spain, but they always tell you that they came off the west coast of Africa. But why won't they tell you that the first slaves came off of Portugal and Spain? Because then they would have to explain. Now, who was it that King Ferdinand and Queen Isabel, Isabella expulsed from Spain? I digress. So, this is Jeremiah 10 and 10. But the Lord, when you see Lord of all capital letters, that's Yahweh. But Yahweh is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting God. Everlasting King, forgive me. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble. How? Via thermonuclear warheads. And the nation shall be shall not be able to abide his indignation. What is indignation? Righteous anger. Now, as you can see on the screen, on the right side of the screen, you see what? Russia's Satan 2. Russia's Satan 2. When you go into the word Satan in the Bible, because Satan is not some some um mythical entity satan is a spiritual entity but satan also has a physical portion of the entity like in the spirit world yahweh is on the right hand side of the father but with us being members of the body of yahweh Shai, that makes us physical entities that have a double portion of his spirit hence the holy spirit or as we say in the lashawan kadash the holy tongue the Rarachah Kodash, the Holy Spirit. Right? So, pardon me, segue over here. I want to go into, come on now, y'all know better. Russia versus U.S. nukes. Russia possesses an estimated 5,977 nuclear warheads as of 2022, the largest stockpile of nuclear warheads in the world. The second largest stockpile is the United States, 5,428 warheads. Russia's deployed missiles, those actually ready to be launched, number about 1,588, second to the United States, 1,644. Now, though America may have more that are ready to be launched, I mean, I just uploaded a video a couple days ago on how, on how America failed at a missile test. So yeah, you may have it. It's like having an old musket that's been sitting on your grandpa's mantle. I mean, it's there, but will it fire? <laughs> and if it does, will it hit his target? Right? Oh, side note. Going into Satan. Like I said, Satan is an individual, a person. The word Satan, go back to the word Shatan, which, mean, which means enemy. In Deuteronomy 28th chapter, the Lord said, We shall be sold to our enemy. So, who had us on auction blocks in New York? Right. The first stock. Think about the word stock in the NYSC, the New York Stock Exchange. The word stock goes back to actual animals. But what was the first stock of the NYSC? Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans. Why? Because it was called chattel slavery. They looked at us as animals. You didn't know that, do you? Yeah. So, the New York Stock Exchange is embedded in slavery. Old money. And all the other countries that's embedded with America in their financial sector, all y'all gonna go down too. That's why, let me go back to it. Spirit heavy. Psalms 59 and 13. Consume them in wrath, consume them that they may not be. And let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. So all y'all gonna get it. All y'all. And say it means enemy <clears throat> or adversary. Revelation 20 and 2. Just so you can understand what I'm saying. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. What? So Satan is the devil and, and the devil is also the old serpent and vice versa. But what does it mean by bound him a thousand years? This, the, um... Septimia Severus, the Severian dynasty, I will say, or era that took down the last stronghold of the Roman Empire, 
they were actually what you would consider in circular history moors but they were israelites see when they tell you that the dark ages the middle ages was a time that was void of wisdom noah was far from that it was a time that dark-skinned people was ruling europe look at coat of arms prior to the renaissance right king james of the bible was from the house of Stuart. look at the coat of arms of the house of Stuart. dark-skinned people swarthy people right so from that time of the end of the greco-roman empire probably like around like almost 200 bc if i'm not mistaken all the way up until like the 1300s which oh, some little time over a thousand years right the renaissance era began but it really didn't start thriving until like the 1500s to 1600s because think about it when did the slave trade start 1492 so how did it start at 1492? Well, they had to have been doing something years prior to that to get to that point, to take us down, to start selling us off. History is vast. I don't want to get into it, but that goes into that Satan bound a thousand years. Who was the devil? Who's the, ser who the serpent? Who was what? So-called white man, woman, and child. How, how could I know that? Type up Herod the Edomite. The Herodian dynasty that was ruling during the time the Messiah was on the, on the scene, whose name is Yahawashai, the 12. Yeah, right? So-called white people, right? You would consider them to be so-called white people, right? Book of Maccabees talks about Alexander the Greek. It takes Epiphanes the four. The four generals. I mean, anyways. Like, like, like Elder Pascal Bar says, if you don't know history, then how are you going to know the mystery of the Bible? Enough waffling, enough waffling. Let's get back to the, um, this, um, lesson at hand which is a part of lesson but i get excited man with this this word is beautiful this knowledge is uh, astounding so i'm gonna close out but i want to go into a little bit to this article i'm not gonna go into it but i just want to read it what is russia say into intercontinental nuclear missile wow named it just for america <laughs> Russia's President Vladimir Putin is issued a fresh warning that Moscow could unleash its RS-28 Sarmat Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, ICBM, nicknamed Satan-2, hmm. before the end of the year as its war in Ukraine rumbles on. And this is synonymous with what um, Russia's, one of his top deputies said. In this article, Russia says U.S. risk wrath of God if it backs Ukraine war crime tribunal. And also, think about it. It's called an ICBM. Well, Russia invaded Ukraine on land. So they're on the same continent. So the ICBM will be for someone that's on not on their continent. Uh, let me guess. North America. Right? So, let me get back to it. Close out. Nahum chapter 1 verse 2 through 7 bear with me God is jealous and the Lord revengeth this is why this is going to happen he's jealous for what his bride the nation of Israel remember the Lord said that the scripture says thine maker is thine husband the Lord said that he has betrothed us unto him why do you think when it speaks about bidding them to the marriage and we say we wait for the bridegroom we're the bride Yahweh Shai is the bridegroom is coming back to save us how they say it? Adios mio. <laughs> and I do mean my God. Allah The Lord revengeth and is furious, but God is all love. <laughs> Buffoonery. The Lord would take vengeance on his adversaries. Remember what I said? The word Satan is synonymous with enemy and adversary. Right? Foe, nemesis, whatever you want to call it. Right? I'm not at the SARS, but I know a couple words. <laughs> and he reserveth wrath, once again, for his enemies. Man, I call her loyal like Yahweh about Shemash. You can't just, you can't make this up, man. The Lord put the spirit on them to make, to make that article. The Lord is slow to anger, meaning he's full of mercy. And so he's, he's going to be, I speak as a man, he's going to be justified in what he's, they are, forgive me, and what they're going to do. The Lord, Yahweh, is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. Oh, slavery's in the past. Let's all come. No. The Lord not going to acquit the wicked. And there is three parts of man. 
The sons of men, the sons of God, and the sons of the wicked. Esau are the sons of the wicked. Read Malachi the first chapter. Because they're the border of wickedness. What did it say when um Alexander the Greek passed away and he had Tychus Epiphanes ruling the earth? And first in the book of Maccabees, what did it say? It said, wickedness exceeded throughout the earth. And never said that about the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Medes, the Persians, the Assyrians, you know, the Elamites. Nope. But when the Greco Roman Empire started ruling, you know, Alexander the Greek, the son of uh, Philip the Macedonian, oh, the Barkery was, oh, it was just everything. The law of Thelman, do as I will, do as I in Rome, all that BS, right? Okay. So you are the wicked. The Lord, continuing, the Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. The whirlwind will be what you eagerly call UFOs, but we're going to leave that alone. And the clouds are the dust of his feet. If you're walking through an alley, if you're walking through like a, a, a dirt road, on a dirt road, you're going to kick up dust, right? It's under your feet. What does that mean? The Lord the Lord is going to be riding on those, on what you call eagerly call UFOs, what we call chariots of God. The vessels of the angels. La have mercy. On us, he rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry, and drieth all the rivers. Bashan languisheth, and Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt. Think about when the Lord was over the Mount Sinai, and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Damn right. Verse 6, who can stand before his indignation or who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him. Oh, yeah, you're going to feel the wrath of God. The wrath of Yahweh about Shem Yahweh Shai about But as for the elect and those who believe, I leave you with this. Nahum 1 and 7, Yahweh is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. So, with that being said, I pray y'all was edified and fed. Stay in the spirit, don't fear it, just endure it. Ask for forgiveness, pray without ceasing, stay humble, remain diligent. Shalom.